I think the biggest problem in the fan base is Player FC. I think Player FC is a, is, is, is horrible. It's very, very true indeed. Hit the like buttons, by the way. Make sure you're subscribing to the Football Terrace. Hit the bell notification button as well. Lots of really interesting takes to go through today. I want to get your opinions on them. But is, as Mark Goldbridge said, is the biggest problem at Man United Player FC? I don't know it exists at other clubs, but I think at Manchester United, it's our biggest problem. There are certain players in this, in this fucking football club that can do whatever they bloody well like and a collection of people on social media or in the stands or wherever will back them. They'll back them and they'll start shouting, agenda, it's an agenda against my player FC. And I think, fuck off, to be honest. I think, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> That was coming. Oh, I want to see that again. I want to see that again. Oh, Mark. They'll start shouting, agenda. It's an agenda against my player FC. And I think, fuck off. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester United is the Busby Babes. It's Sir Matt Busby. It's the Trinity. It's Brian Robson. It's Cantona. It's the Class of 92. It's Sir Alex. It's Roy Keane. It's Rooney. It's Ronaldo. It, it, it's, it's Manchester United as a team delivering things as a team. I couldn't give a shit about Player FC anymore. I'm not interested in it. You will get praise as a player if you're somebody that, you know, suits this football club. Mark is so right here, and I'm glad he's calling out this Player FC nonsense. And I'll tell you as to why. I was frustrated, very frustrated with the way Eric Ten Hag handled the situation with... Jaden Sancho. I didn't think he need, needed to make it public. I didn't like the way the club leaked stories afterwards. I didn't like the way they treated him by sticking him in the car park to eat his lunch. I didn't like the way Jose Mourinho spoke about Anthony Martial when he was at the birth of his child. I don't like how Jose Mourinho spoke about Luke Shaw. Equally, I don't like how Jaden Sancho took to social media to air his grievances back. Two wrongs do not make a right. I didn't like how Cristiano Ronaldo did an interview about the club, even though there were elements of what he said that I agree with. I didn't believe it. A lot of people see it as oh, he was doing us a favor. No, he was orchestrating a move away from the club. I don't agree with any of those behaviors. But what I see far, far more regularly now at Man United than ever before is... If I like a player, I'm going to defend him to the hilt, no matter what he does wrong, no matter how much evidence there is that he he is the, 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 the not the victim in this situation, I'm going to defend him. And if it's a player I don't like, it doesn't matter what happens, what evidence there is to support him, I'm going to hate upon him. And Mark's right. This is a divisive problem that exists within our fan base. And I saw it last night. I am disgusted with what Rashford has done. Disgusted with what Rashford has done. There's no doubt about that. I think he is wrong. He was right. It was right that he was dropped for the Wolves game, and it's now been widely reported. He said he was available. Said he was feeling better. The manager said no. Since then, he has taken his discipline. He has accepted that he did wrong. He has apologized for his mistake, and he is now back for selection. Now, for me, I would have still kept him out of a game or two more. I agree with that. But people are saying there's clear double standards here because. Look at the way Sancho was treated. But for that to be a double standard, Sancho would have to have apologised as quickly as Rashford appears to have done. Sancho went public where Rashford is not. So the scenario is suddenly different. So to compare them like for like is wrong. Now, I'm not denying I've got worries and fears about the way his teammates are going to react. I think the punishment should have been longer. Saying the punishment should have been more harsh, longer, I'm worried about the ramifications, is very different from saying, well, he clearly treats people differently when you cannot provide an example that is equal to that of Rashford's. That's where I think fans have got to become more balanced and have a bit more, excuse the pun, of a United front. Because if it continues in this vein, this poison is going to hurt the new ownership, the new manager, and any new players that come into this football club, in my humble, humble opinion. <laughs> To me the other day. Look at Alonso. Look at the work he's doing. I go, yeah, but that's what Arteta was doing last season. Yeah, yeah exactly. In a harder league to win. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, a much harder league to win <laughs> absolutely. than the Bundesliga. Yeah, if he absolutely. had been in the Bundesliga, he'd have probably won it. There's some people saying, ah, he's not good enough. And I'm like, mm. who? When you ask that question to people, who? All of a sudden, 
Right? They're not able to answer yeah, it Yeah, yeah, well, exactly, right? exactly. No, Zidane name got thrown about as well. Yeah. But look mm. at the Real Madrid that Zidane took over. Yeah, he, he acting like he took over a, a, a team that had nobody. He, he took over a star-studded Real Madrid team. Zidane, I don't know if Zidane would be, would be the answer. And the fact that Barcelona would want him, they would want him, shows you that he is one of the best young managers Absolutely. around. How many much better managers that, are, that would be available are out there. I mean, it, this, we'd exactly. all love Pep, but he's not available. We'd all love... It, it's a great point that Robbie's making there. Let me finish it, actually, because I think he's about to say something else. I love Ancelotti, but he's not available. And then a lot of the other managers I look at, I like, they're good managers. I like things about them. How do you know? I mm -hmm. look at there. There's some nice managers that, are like, you, like you said, deserve and people like that. I like look, look, I think Robbie, Robbie's putting on a great point here. I think you can be Arteta out. But you have to have an idea of who you want to come in. That person that you want to come in, it has to be somebody that is attainable. It has to be. It has to be. And what, and what I mean by that is you can't say Pep. You can't say Klopp. You can't say Ancelotti. In my personal opinion, all three of those individuals are completely unattainable for Arsenal. So they're out the window. If that's your solution... You, you've already failed. You could argue Diego Simeone. I think Arsenal were big enough to bring him in. I think that's a fair argument. Outside of that, genuinely, who's attainable that's better? A genuine question. And this isn't about an argument. I just want to know, who in the comment sections do you think is better? Because I find that the, the opinions that people give around this subject a little bit circular. I'm angry that Arteta is in. I want Arteta removed. Who do you want in to replace him? Zidane or Ancelotti or Klopp? They're not attainable. So if you get the first half of what you want, you're then going to be back to being angry because you're likely to appoint a manager that you know isn't on your list. But the managers you're putting upon your list, you know are unattainable. And the other alternatives you look at in the same light as you do Arteta. So how realistic is your thought process? That's what I want to try and understand from you today. I get, listen, the criticism of Arteta needs to exist. The pushing and the standards against Arteta need to exist. The idea of one day sacking him needs to exist. But surely you have to be able to give an opinion. I understand if you're asking for, oh, we need to go and put on an unknown midfielder from somewhere. It's hard to kind of put your finger on that. But when it comes to managers that can take a team the size of Arsenal with where they sit currently and go to the next level, Surely it's only going to be a manager who's known to us. And if you can't name them, I have a problem with your opinion. But I, I, look, I want to get your take. I want to get your views. Uh, make sure like buttons are being smashed and that you are subscribing. Up next, I want to take a look at this crazy thing I, I, I see about Steve Housen. <laughs> wow. He got, a bit of a, he got a bit of a hit in the face there. And I see this trending. I see a lot of people are going after Steve Housen. Oh, he got this, this happened, what, what, the other. And I'm watching the video footage, right? I want, there's a clip at the beginning of it. I want to go to this video footage. A lot of people are saying that Housen's wrong. The only element where I'd argue maybe he's wrong, it looks like he's on the pitch and he's the manager. He shouldn't be on the pitch. But look, the big fella in front of him butts him. So I don't think there's anything wrong with defending yourself. The man's already hit you once. He may hit you again. In ensuring, he hit him. Square. Fine. No problems. Then what you get is what I, a weak man thing. You get this dude here, number six, attacks him. <laughs> How some throws in a headbutt. I don't know why. He, it's like Gilchrist. I don't know why you're throwing in a headbutt, but he does. And then you see the cowardly behavior of the other guy. Watch. As House is facing him, he throws a punch him. So people are talking like Housen got done. No. Where I grew up, in the environment I grew up in, in the East End of London, in the 90s and the noughties, once more than one guy jumped in to fight you, your opponents automatically were considered the losers. It's become a weak stain on society where a man can get jumped and was like, oh, you got done. No, you didn't get done. If you get jumped, you win. You win by default. Right? But look at that. Absolute cheap shots here. So him. Cheap shot coming in here. He headbutts him. Defending himself. 
little cheap shot there. And then another dude's running in, I think, to try and break it up. And then somebody else runs across, right? And that's it, broken up. I don't understand why Houston's getting a, getting a criticism for this. Someone headbutted him. He rightfully defended himself by striking back to ensure that he could not be hit again. That's completely legal and above board. And then two cowards tried to jump him. Yes, he got caught a little bit on the eye and he's got a bit of a shiner. But why is he... I don't understand. I know some people don't like Houston, so that's going to... It's crazy. Look, I'm, I'm going to back him here because he's part of the fan channel community. I know he hasn't always done things that everybody's happy with. But come on now. How are you having a go at him for two cowards trying to jump him on a football pitch? Come on. Do, for me, I think you all should be doing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit better than that. Stop it. Get some help. Next year, you'll be the only manager in the Premier League who's won the Premier League. Oh, yeah. And not, one, not once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, I, I like it when Pep's in a good mood. It's a bit of a snide dig at Jurgen Klopp. And not just once. I think maybe he's been a little bit jaded for the, you know, the questions that have come out in the last few days about his kind of rivalry and he's head to head with Jurgen Klopp, which I think for most of us hasn't really been, it's been a rivalry, but it hasn't been one for the ages. He's come out so far on top. But, I mean, maybe this season changes it if Liverpool win two or three or four trophies. But he's come out so far on top, it's unbelievable. So a, a little subtle dig there from me. I thought it was funny when I saw it. I want to get your views and opinions. Listen, everyone who's tuned in, thank you. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the Football Terrace. And we'll see you all again 